Alright, hey guys, I'm going to be giving you guys a quick tutorial on uh, how factories work and production works. So the first thing we're going to go over is construction. And so on the top left, it will say 9 out of 32 for the start of a game. But in total, we have 32 factories that are working. So the next thing, the way you want to do is build factories. And you can see that right here it says 15 out of 15. So for anything that you build, the max amount of factories that it can use to construct this one civilian factory is 15. So that's at the max, which means even though you have more available factories to construct. So now, we don't have any more available because we only have so many factories. So now you have 8 out of 15. And that's this. You only have 15 per, that's pretty simple. And the next thing you want to know, and that's, I didn't know for a long time, is what consumer goods do. Consumer goods are, let's match them as taxes. You have 100 civilian factories, you have 32 civilian factories, but of them, 60% are going into consumer goods. And so that means you have 23. And your wait, there's a few ways to get rid of consumer goods. You can go to um, your mobilization law, which in most countries that are in civic economy, which you always want to get rid of. But you can just keep lowering and lowering down. So war economy is what I recommend the most. But if you, have, if you have a lot of manpower, you can do total mob. And also, at war, when you're at war, there's a decision called war bonds that you can do. And you basically, it will give you Minus five percent of goods for a few for a few months. And it costs more political power the more you use it. And that's all there really is that's important with construction. Now next we're gonna go into production. And I'm gonna explain to you what all these do and what happens to your production when you don't have resources. So dockyard and factory output it's just it's influenced by uh, your export law and your stability. And your export law is this. You want you don't want to go um, close the economy unless you really have to, like for, for Romania to give oil to Germany. But you want to do export normally, or at least, or sometimes you can do free trade, if you can afford it. Or at least if you do do free trade, do it in the do it in the beginning, and then let's say, if you're playing Germany, convert back in 38, when you start making military factories. So I would synchronize building military factories with going back to export. And these also give you buffs, like construction, research, and more output, but they export more resources. And so next, uh, we have production and efficiency cap. So the way that works is that when you look at support equipment and all this, you have 50% efficiency. So if I had 100% production efficiency, I would have the equivalent to having four factories. I would be making 2.48 a day. But since I have only 50%, I'm only making 1.99. Then the next thing is how is production efficiency growth. And basically that is just and uh, production efficiency retention. Basically, it's just, see this red bar? I converted the guns to a worse equipment, so now it lost 40% of the bar that it had originally. So basically, when, a, when you were making 50 guns a day, now you're making 18, and the higher this, the higher these numbers are, the less of this bar you lose. Now, at production efficiency growth, it says how much one factory gives. It's like factory output, and they're basically the same thing. And then factory bomb, Vulnerability is just how likely your factory starts to get bombed. And the next thing you do is notice that we, we do have a deficit of rubber. Now you can see that these, th these three things use rubber. So the motorized is, hover is losing 0.75, while when you go down a ladder, this is losing 17, and this is losing 27. Because you have a deficit of uh, 6 rubber. And you want to buy rubber so that this bounces out. But sometimes it's not worth it, sometimes it is. You just want to check it and make your own decision. But another thing that's important with it is that if you don't want to buy rubber, but you still need to make these things. So let's say I want to, I want to make closer support more prioritized. The higher a thing is, the more resources it gets. So now this has a 7.5, and this one has a 17% debuff. So it's just the order that this bar is in is how is. Right, the prioritization of where your resources go. And that's really all. For Navy, there's not anything important only that you really need to know. And that's really it. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button. Thank you.